Welcome to Let the Quran Speak. The world has stood by as we've watched Palestinians being killed, many others watching their loved ones suffering in gruesome ways, and still others, countless others, trying to go back home but finding nothing there. And yet, Palestinians have moved us with their persistence, their resilience, their faith, and their insistence on living and living well. With me is Dr. Shabir Ali to understand this phenomenon. Dr. Shabir, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. Pleasure to be on. Dr. Shabir, we've seen so many videos of Palestinians in Gaza who are doing the best they can in the circumstances, despite the difficulties, the suffering that they're going through. Somehow, they still maintain faith and hope. So can you tell me a little bit about this phenomenon and how it has affected you, Dr. Shabir? Their faith is contagious uh, and it affects me in that uh, seeing people going through all of the suffering, you know, loss of home and property, everything demolished around them. And, and still they're saying, Alhamdulillah, which means uh, praise be to God. Um, so their, their, their faith is uh, inspiring, inspiring to the rest of us. It uh, makes us feel that, you know, we go through difficulties in life as well. And, uh, and sometimes a person can be driven to despair, but seeing the resilience of these people and the strength of their faith uh, certainly inspires the rest of us to have uh, great faith in, in God as well. Dr. Shabir, I've been speaking with uh, our loved ones in Gaza, my husband's family, and that is the same thing. They just keep saying, Alhamdulillah, praise be to God for everything. And uh, it is very inspiring, and it's, and it's hard to understand how we should respond in that circumstance, you know? Because they're, you know, you're asking them, do you have food? And you know that they don't have very much. But they're still saying Alhamdulillah. And they're constantly making dua, you know, not just for for themselves and asking me to make dua for me, for, for them, but also they're making dua for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's very inspiring to me. Yeah. So, it, you know, th this is part, of course, of the Islamic teachings in, in general. And, and for all of us, uh, we are told to say, Alhamdulillah, la kulli hal, praise be to God in, uh, er, in any situation. Mm -hmm. That's exactly, those are exactly the words that they use. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we are, we are taught in our tradition to uh, look at people who have less than us, who are worse off than us, so that we can thank God for the bounties that we already enjoy. Mm -hmm. Even though we are, we are, you know, given poor circumstances, we are struck with calamity, but uh, somebody could be worse off than us. Uh, there, there, there was a, one of our uh, saintly persons in history uh, who said, I used to complain about having no shoes until I saw a person having no feet. Uh, so we, we look at somebody who has uh, less than us so that we can give thanks to God for what we have. So. You know, for, uh, I can imagine uh, the Gazans just, uh, you know, applying this principle and thinking, okay, in the case of one man who was being asked about his situation, he says, okay, the house is demolished, everything is ruined around me, but alhamdulillah, my family is safe and his kitten is safe. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we, we still have a lot to be thankful for, but, but it's easy for me to say because I'm not in Gaza. Mm -hmm. But seeing the people of Gaza going through this, and uh, we're, we're all reeling at all of the bombardment uh, over many weeks, and uh, we fear for the lives of the people there, and, and we're all hurt and saddened uh, by this utter destruction, and, and yet the people are emerging from the rubble and saying, Praise be to God. And they, they have this faith in God that's helping them to move forward, Dr. Shabir. They understand. And from when I, when I speak to my loved ones, I get this understanding from them that, you know, nobody can help us in this circumstance. We understand that. Nobody can help us or will help us. But God is there for us. And, and we're relying on God and trusting in God to help us get through this. Yes. And of course, there are many verses with the Quran, Safiya, as you know, that uh, cultivate this attitude. And Muslims are very devoted to the Quran and they read the Quran again and again over and over. They memorize the verses and uh, certain key things from the Quran just to bring in our minds again and again. Like, for example, verses that say, um, let, let those who are going to put their trust in anything put their trust in God. And um, uh, another verse says, uh, uh, whoever uh, puts the trust in God, uh, God will open up a way for that person. And will provide for him from whence he had no expectation. And uh, other verses say, for example, uh, whoever puts their trust in God, you know, God is sufficient for them. 
and uh, you, you know, versus like husband Allah, when uh, uh, they God is sufficient for us, and He is the best of defender, of defenders. Uh, so all of these uh, verses and uh, teachings from the Islamic tradition really cultivate uh, a, a spirit of resilience and uh, and strong faith among Muslims, and mm-hmm. and this is having a, a contagious effect. We we, we see that uh, non-Muslims are embracing Islam. Uh, more than ever within this uh, period of, of difficulty. Within the last uh, uh, few weeks, uh, I myself have uh, been privileged uh, to welcome into the faith uh, at least three persons, if I just uh, try to remember off the bat, pe- mm-hmm. persons who came to my office and uh, recited the Shahada Declaration of Faith, uh, announcing for the first time that they have now sealed the deal with God that from henceforth they are Muslims. Mm-hmm. Dr. Shabir, just a few weeks ago, I also helped someone to become a Muslim from Australia, all the way in Australia. So it's happening. And, you know, many people are requesting Qur'ans. You'll see many Muslim organizations asking where they can get free Qur'ans to distribute to people. Um, there are many TikTokers and influencers on you know Instagram as well um, who are converting to Islam publicly, you know? Yes. And so, then they're putting out YouTube, uh, TikTok videos yes. uh, to say, you know, this is my newfound faith. Yes. And they were inspired by Palestinians and and so they started to learn more about Islam as a yes, result. Yes, uh, prominent among them is Megan Rice, uh, an, a, an influencer who actually um, announced that she has taken the Shahada. And uh, sometimes people try to analyze like what is happening here. Some people think, okay, maybe this is a fad. And when the fad is over, you know, the uh, people will go back to what they, what they were. Uh, but uh, one of these uh, persons who embraced Islam <laughs> responds to that by asking, what am I going to go back to? You think I'm going to go back to capitalism? To uh, like what? What is there that's better than than, than what I have now? Uh, so they they are attracted to the ideology of Islam. So perhaps it's this one last thing that that you know um, tips the balance and causes them to embrace Islam. But it could have been something they were thinking about before, or maybe something that really caught them by surprise, as in the case of one of them who said, you know, they just started the book club to read about what is happening. And then they, as they read the Quran, uh, this is uh, the faith that uh, they found themselves attracted to. Very inspiring, Dr. Shabir. Thank you. You're welcome. Assalamu alaikum. We have some exciting news to share with you. As you know, Let the Quran Speak has been on TV screens and social media for 22 years. We've been reaching people all around the world, spreading positivity and good, and helping people experience the beauty of Islam and the accomplishments of Muslims. We've been shooting in this very space for the past two decades. And now, with the help of Allah, we're about to get the keys to Muslim Media Hub. If you like what we're doing, you're going to love Muslim Media Hub even more. Because it's the next step up. Think new TV shows, podcasts, social media content, and film. It will have new talent, more youth, and a lot more space and resources to do what we love. Spread the message of Allah. Our Muslim Media Hub costs $2.4 million. And for that, we need to raise $300,000. Please give whatever you can. Every dollar counts. It's our collective responsibility to share the message of Islam with our fellow human beings. Please help establish Muslim Media Hub so we can do this. It's a Sadaqa Jariya, something that will continue to be of benefit to the Muslim community long after we are gone. Thank you, and may Allah bless you and your loved ones today and always. Assalamu alaikum.